what is going on clan as promised we've got a full guide for the elder scrolls 5 skyrim now this will cover all of the trophies or achievements in the base game this did take a while to make so a like on the video is very much appreciated i do have some rules before we jump into it now please follow the instructions because there are some missable trophies and you don't want to miss them other than that i really want you to just have fun on this journey with me through tamriel and anyone that uses the guide, again, I appreciate your time, and thanks for coming along. One last thing I'd like to note is, well, we finally got our first sponsor, and I do understand that ads can be annoying in videos. However, I do want to make this eventually a full-time thing and make more and more content for you guys. Right now, I do juggle this with my full-time job, so I find myself up very late in the night just to make sure that I can get as much done as possible. So again, eventually, I can put more time into the channel, which will then lead to more guides and more content for you guys. So if you do want to support the channel, go ahead and take a look at the ad. However, I will have a timestamp below that you can skip the ad with, and then you don't have to watch it. Other than that, guys, if you're new around here... Now, quick notice, there is a trophy to read 50 skill books, and the guides online will also tell you to read those 50 skill books while you're playing through the game and just keep an eye out for them. But I say fuck that. I'm going to give you some nice easy ones at the end of the guide, and then you can easily smash that trophy out. Alright, after you start the game, you'll eventually come to this part with Roloff. So this part basically acts as a tutorial to teach you how to equip armor and weapons and things like that. And I also want you to change the difficulty here because... I think you'd be more comfortable over at that place. Weenie Hut Juniors! Are you saying I belong at Weenie Hut Juniors? Uh, oh no, sorry. I was actually pointing to the place next to it. Super Weenie Hut Juniors! Now that being said, you don't have to put it to easy. However, it's going to make going for the trophies a lot faster. And the purpose of this guide is to get these trophies faster and more efficiently. So definitely recommend it, but again, you don't have to do that. Okay, so while we go through the introductory level, I'll just quickly go over some miscellaneous trophies. Again, the reader trophy is read 50 books. I'll have a certain segment for that. Now, some of those will be obtained while you're just playing the game. And then if not, I do have specific sections to show you how to go for those trophies specifically. That being said, anytime you see a lock, go ahead and unlock it because there is a trophy to pick 50 pockets as well as locks. And a bit later in the guide, I also show you how to never fail the locks. Now keep going with roll off and you'll eventually hit a story related trophy for getting out of that area at the beginning of the game, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see, if we just keep going down the road a bit, you're going to hit these blessed stones. Now this will be yet another easy trophy we can smash out. There's these guardian stones to get the blessed trophy. And you just want to activate one of them and that's going to pop the trophy. I do recommend activating the thief one, but any of them will do and they will get you the trophy. Alright, so after you get that trophy, you'll keep going down the path even further. And towards the east side, as you can see here, there'll be a fork in the road. And if we go up this way on the eastern side, you're going to find the Ember Shard Mine. Now you'll see this Mohawk bitch outside. Go ahead and smack her and grab her shit, and then head on in. Now as you clear out the mine, you'll find this bridge here, and you'll find this campfire. Again, you can clear out the mine and then do this. It's completely up to you. But you'll find a pickaxe at this camp, and then you can find iron ore veins around here. The first thing I want you to do is go ahead and mine that once you've grabbed your pickaxe. And that's going to be one out of the three that we need for the hard worker trophy. Alright, so why don't we go for two out of three on that same trophy. Now, if you progress a bit further, you'll come to the town of Riverwood. And you'll find this area here with a chopping block. And all you want to do is chop some wood. And it's just that easy, guys. Bam, two out of three, very nice. But you know what's better than two out of three? Three out of three, to get that damn trophy. So the next thing we need to do is cook some food. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now if you go inside the inn, the sleeping giant inn, you can speak with this guy who has some items for sale. If you go into ingredients, you should be able to find a salt pile. Um, if it's not there, you can you know zone out, uh, you can actually quick save and then punch him in the face and then reload your quick save and that actually refreshes his shop as well. I'll explain a bit more of that later. But just get a salt pile and then out front of this shop is actually a cabbage. 
All right, so after you grab the cabbage, you can actually go into the shop that you found the cabbage from. It's called the Riverwood Trader, and they have a cooking pot. If you go ahead and use it, you'll see a food option, and we're going to make some cabbage soup. And that should net you the hard worker trophy, guys. That easy. So you should have all three of those. All right, so after that, if you continue with the quest line, you'll eventually have to speak with Alvor the blacksmith, and he will teach you how to craft and smith items. This is actually going to give us some progress towards the trophy called Artificer, and basically that's for smithing an item. As you can see, we have two of those left, which we will get a bit later as I progress through the guide. After you've done this side of the quest, you can then head to Whiterun, which is directly north of Riverwood, so you just run your happy ass up north. Okay, so once we arrive at Whiterun, there will be a guard out front who stops you. Now this is a perfect opportunity for us to get one of the options for a trophy. So you just want to choose the option Persuade, and then we can get Intimidate and Bribe later on in the guide. And that should give you progress towards the trophy. After that you can make your way into Whiterun and try to avoid the guards, because I swear sometimes they'll be telling you random shit. Hey you, stop right there. Wait, who, me? Yes, now guess what? Um, okay, what? I used to be an adventurer like you, and I took an arrow in the knee. Wait, is that really why you called me over? Dude, why didn't you just use ExpressVPN? What in the 500 releases of Skyrim is an ExpressVPN? Jesus, dude, you are sheltered. ExpressVPN is a tool that you can use to protect yourself and remain private when you're online. ExpressVPN is also useful in so many ways. To list a few, it can be used to secure and protect your online data, but it can also unlock content that would otherwise be blocked in your region. And that'll work with practically any of your streaming services. Now I'm in Australia, for example, and I want to watch Hunter x Hunter, which isn't available for me on the Aussie Netflix. With a simple click of the button, I'm in the US and I'm enjoying my sweet, sweet anime. And it's really that easy. Ah, I see, so hiding my location would have prevented me from taking an arrow in the knee. Exactly, so if you're interested in protecting yourself and getting three months of ExpressVPN for free, then head over to expressvpn.com slash Bushido Cypher to learn more. Now I hope you are using a VPN, because for this next trophy in the middle of Whiterun, I want you to actually save your game. So create a backup save, because we're about to do some dodgy shit and we do not want to be tracked. After you've saved your game, I want you to pull out whatever weapon you have and just beat the shit out of everyone. <laughs> nah, but just, just, just start attacking them, and uh, eventually the guards will be like, Look, you can't be doing that, man. Okay? And just let them know that you submit and you want to be taken to jail. Now to escape, there's a little manhole cover here that you can pick lock. And then make your way outside. After you've done that and you've got the trophy... Alright guys, so after you've done all that, go ahead and continue with the main story until you get the Bleak Falls Barrow quest. Now the reason being is you want to go to this temple, and eventually when you're inside the temple, I do have these pillars here that you need to switch around. Now they all want to be switched to the snake, except for the last one which will be switched to a whale, and then you can press the lever to open the door. Now again, I will be skipping parts of the quest that you don't need to see. I think you're very much capable of following a waypoint. However, I will show solutions to puzzles and other things that I think might be worth mentioning throughout the guide, just to save your time. Now as you see there, the solution was actually on the claw itself, but it's bear, butterfly, and moth. At least I think that's what that is. Actually, that's a fucking owl. I'm not too sure, but you see the photos there. I think it's an owl. God damn it. Now towards the end of the dungeon, you're actually going to find a shout on the wall. Now we'll be collecting these throughout our playthrough. So whenever you see these in game, just make sure you do actually collect them. You'll notice because you got like slurps it up and then it says that you got a shout. Alright guys, now this next part I'm going to show you how to do an exploit to make yourself extremely overpowered. Um, you can skip this and I will have timestamps below, but if you do want to do this, I need you to run north and get to Dawnstar and go to the Mortar and Pestle um, shop, whatever you want to call it. You're going to speak with Frida here. She's going to give you a quest to find a ring. The reason we want this ring is because it gives an alchemy enchant that we're going to use to do the exploit to make ourselves super fucking OP. 
All right, so she's going to give you that miscellaneous quest. You can track it so that way you have a waypoint, and it's called Find the Ring of Pure Mixtures. Now, make your way through the dungeon and follow the waypoint. It's very easy, and you will find a shout on the wall. And next to that shout is actually going to be a chest that has the ring inside. So make sure you loot that as well. Now, as you can see, it says created potions are 12% more powerful. Now, that's the enchantment that we need for the exploit. Now, something worth mentioning is if you are ever leaving a dungeon or needing guidance, you can actually go in the world map and press square for a local view. And every dungeon always has like a shortcut at the end of it as well. So that's worth mentioning. So that way you don't run all the way back through the dungeon to get back to the start. Anyways, after you get the ring, make your way back to Frida and let her know that you have the ring. All right, perfect. So after you give her the ring back, uh, we're going to do a little bit of Uno reverse and we want to steal the ring back. Now, if you see when I go to pickpocket her, it says I have a 12% chance to steal. That's fucking terrible. What you want to do is use your perks to upgrade your pickpocketing skill. That bonus percentage that it gives you actually makes a world of difference. And you'll get skill points really easy with this exploit as well. So again, just learn the light fingers perk so that way you will have a better bonus chance at stealing the item. And as you can see, that 12% chance goes to 32. Now before you actually steal the ring, you can quickly hit quick save. And then that way, when you go to steal it, if you get caught, you can just reload the quick save and then keep trying until you don't get caught. It shouldn't take you long with that percentage of success anyways. All right, so I want you to fast travel to Dawnstar. The reason why is because it's going to take you to this specific spot. Now, when you're here, I want you to press the touchpad so you can use the wait feature and just keep waiting until you see this group of cat boys. So once you're in the group of cat boys, You'll see um, they have a shop here if you speak with Akari. Um, now, Akari has 788 gold, um, all these different items like a dwarven bow and stuff, which, which is awesome, okay? Like, that, that's really fucking cool. So what I want you to do is make a backup save, okay? Um, and the reason being is this part's going to be pretty awesome. Make a backup save and then immediately run down this path. Well, not, not immediately. It's not like a time thing or, any, or anything like that. You can just run. So run all the way down. And again, we're in Dawnstar. We just spoke to the uh, the cat boys. You also want to grab some snowberries on the way. So there's those things, by the way. So just start grabbing those because um, we'll need them for alchemy a bit later. That'll just make it a bit easier later on when we need to do some alchemy for these potions. Now, towards the end by this mine entrance, you'll see three rocks. If you aim the camera towards the ground, in a certain way, you can see that it says search chest. Now, you might be thinking, what the fuck? And that is very valid because if you actually hit search chest, all of the items that that Akari cat had are in this chest and they are free for the picking. Now, don't ask me how this is possible. All I know is that it's fucking great. You get nice early cash. Um, you get all these different uh, weapons that have enchants. I wouldn't bother with the weapons that don't have anything on it um, or the armor that doesn't have anything on it. And I'd watch your carry weight as well. Otherwise, that would be a bit annoying. But I definitely want you to take all of the soul gems because we're going to need it for enchanting. Take the lock picks as well because they'll come in handy until we actually start enchanting. Um, and, you know, just things like that. Uh, you want any item that has, you know, like stamina so if it has a stamina enchant that would be a good one to have or a carry weight enchant for example these boots right here they're called the hide boots of sneaking that's so we can get that enchant any any weapon enchant or armor enchant that's on the actual item you can actually learn by disenchanting it which i'll show you how to do later so by grabbing those it's going to help you out when we do the exploit then go ahead and run back to the cat lady Ah, uh -uh, and don't forget to grab a few little bit of, you know, cheeky snowberries there. And then again, make your way back to Catboy and Lava Girl. Because what I'll do is I'll quickly show you how you can farm that chest over and over and still keep getting different items and, you know, stock up some gold and things like that. So once you get back to them, I want you to actually do quick save option. And then I want you to pull out whatever weapon you have and shoot that bitch in the face. Okay, once you've done that, when you reload the save, it's going to refresh the store, 
or her items, whatever you want to call it. You do have to hit them. I don't understand why. Just please hit them and then reload your save. But make sure you quick save every time before you hit them so that way you can load from that point. Now, as you can see, we've reloaded our save. I just wanted to show you this. She has the 788 gold again, and then she has a, you know an assortment of all these different items. She still has the soul gems and things like that, but you'll have different items. You can keep running back and forth and farm her, basically. As you can see, there's actually gloves that give the effect of that ring that we got from the quest, um, but it's completely random, so I still recommend doing the quest just to make sure you do get that specific enchant. Now after that, after you've done as much farming as you want, you've gotten plenty of soul gems, plenty of gold, I want you to head back to Whiterun. And in the town square of Whiterun, we can go to Arcadia's Cauldron. Alright guys, so we're going to do a bit of shopping so we can actually get the ingredients needed for the exploit. So go into her shop, and you want to make sure that you grab 10 of the long fins, uh, 10 of the cyrodelic spade tails, at least five blister words, at least five, you know, glowing mushrooms. The shopping list is all there. Make sure you get those. The last two aren't really necessary, but if you see them, you can buy them. Ultimately, these are going to be used for the potions to actually do the exploit. Now, again, this exploit isn't necessary. However, if you do want to blow through the game even faster, it does help. You're already playing on easy, so again, it's not necessary, but it's kind of fun and it's not too hard to do. Now to refresh her shop you just want to again quick save attack her and then load and as you can see the shop will change. So this is how I farmed all my ingredients just keep doing that until you get the amount that I suggested on the shopping list and then we can proceed. Alright guys we're finally ready to do the exploit now while doing this you should get the last two remaining of the artificer trophy which is enchant an item and create a potion and again, to learn the enchantment, you do have to disenchant it. So that ring that we got, you just want to disenchant it, and it'll go into the enchantment slot tab on the enchantment table. All right, guys, so I do want you to make a backup save, and that's so that way if you mess any of this exploit up, you can reload the save without needing to farm the ingredients again. Now, you should have some skill perks to use. I want you to increase your enchanter by one to make the enchanted item stronger. And I want you to raise your alchemy up as much as you can. Recommended is 3 out of 5 for the first skill, and then Physician and Benefactor unlocked as well. You can actually use Arcadia in that shop to raise your alchemy just by paying gold. After you've done that, we can now do the exploit. You should have rings and necklaces as well. If you don't, you can buy them from shops, so just use the reload shop trick until you get them. Now there's four pieces of gear that I want you to enchant, and it's a ring, a necklace, a helmet, and gloves. Now I got lucky and I found those gauntlets which already had 15% alchemy, so that was a nice jump for me, but again, you can just enchant some normal gloves with the enchant that you got. It's good to use the best soul gems you have possible, that way it increases your effect. As you can see, this is a 9% helmet. And those were the gloves that were already pretty high up. But as you can see, the ring and the necklace I made are 9% as well. And that's because I'm using the best soul gem I have, which you should have got plenty from that chest trick we did earlier. Again, if you need any jewelry to enchant or any armor, you can always get it through the shops by using the reload trick. And now we're going to actually do the exploit. So just pay close attention. It's not too bad once you understand what's going on. I'll try and make this as easy as possible. So basically, you use the long fin or the spade tail, so one or the other, and then use it with a salt pile. And that's going to create a fortify restoration. Now we're going to use an effect called stacking. We're going to stack this restoration buff. So after you made one of those potions, go into the potions tab, and then drink the potion with square. And then unequip your armor, but don't exit the menu, and then re-equip it. And you'll see the little triangles knowing that you've unequipped it. And you'll see your guy kind of glowing and stuff. And if you go back to Fortify Restoration, you'll actually see the ingredients you used before. Now make another potion. And then go out, drink the potion. Unequip your gear again in apparel. And then re-equip it. It seems like a lot going on. But if you slow it down, it's actually really easy to digest. Again, we're creating a potion. 
the Fortify Restoration, which is used with um, either a salt pile and a spade tail or a salt pile and a long fin. Then you drink the potion, you go back into your apparel, you unequip it without leaving the menu, and then you re-equip it, and then you go right back into it while your guy's glowing, and you keep creating them. As you can see, if you already see, it says a crazy-ass percentage on the right. I mean, if you thought it was buggy enough, look at this shit that you can do in this game. As you can see, even on the gear itself, it's got a crazy number of percentage that it's boosting things. Um, you want to maybe do this about 10 times, and you'll get some miscellaneous trophies along the way, like maybe 100 alchemy and things like that. Now, you only want to do this about 10 times, because otherwise the number gets so big that it starts crashing the game. I mean, as you can see, it's already almost as high as my IQ. Now, after you get it to about that 10 time range, so you should have made 10 of those potions, we're going to make a different potion. So you want to use a blister wart with a glowing mushroom, and that's going to make a smithing potion. Okay, so I've got other ingredients on the screen that you can use if you don't have the mushroom and the blister wart. Make as many of the potions that you can make, and then this is where the snowberries are going to come in clutch. Use the snowberries and the spriggan sap, or any of the other ingredients I have on the screen, and you can make some really crazy enchanting ones as well. Now, if you got this far, amazing. If anything fucked up or it didn't quite work, you can reload the save and try again. Again, only do it about 10 times, otherwise you're going to have such a big number, it's going to start crashing the game. And if you did get the exploit working, you can always make another backup save right here, so that way at least it's less effort for you um, to revert back to if you need to. Alright, so next up we're going to make some OP armor. Now you can make whatever you want because it's going to be so ridiculously OP that how it looks doesn't matter because um, the stats will be completely broken on it. I was already 100 smithing so I did decide to make some elven armor so I could look totally badass. Um, you're going to gain a lot of levels doing this because of the XP that's given for having such a high quality grade equipment being made. It's just going to shoot you up. So me personally, I just went and did the elven smithing, and again, it doesn't matter what you decide to make. If you want to make something cheap, just get the hide armor or the iron. Those are very, very easy to get. You can get the supplies from the vendors here. Now, I do suggest you make another set of hide armor or any kind of spare armor so we can use it at the end of this segment. Basically, just make whatever armor you can. Um, so again, I made a full set of the elven, so I made the, you know, the chest piece, the gauntlets, etc. After I've done that, what I'm going to do is come over to this workbench and drink a potion of fortify smithing. Now, as you see, it makes the armor rating go to like 34,000, and then they're worth over 300,000 gold. So it's a good way to make some very OP armor to sell as well if you need gold. And then you can also make um, an OP dagger and an OP bow. And the bow is good for dragons that don't come down, and you can just shoot them. Now, another good thing is if you go inside the shop, you can find some really good weapons and armor that have enchants on them. For example, carrying weight of 25 points. We can actually use the exploit and make it to where we can carry whatever the hell we want. So you can sift through here and find some good enchants. I'll give you some enchants that I recommend going for and you can just refresh the shop whenever you need to. So just as a quick example, you can see I disenchant the carry weight enchant and the lock picking one so that way I can exploit those as well. All right, so we showed you how to start the exploit. Now how about I show you how to keep the exploit? So with that scrap armor you made, which may have been the hide armor or whatever you decided to make, I want you to drink a fortify enchanting potion that you made. This is gonna make your enchantments very OP and as you can see, the Fortify Alchemy enchant will now be crazy OP, and you can put it on those four pieces of gear. And then whenever you want to make a really ridiculous potion for the exploit, you can just put on this scrap piece of gear, and then you'll be able to do it with ease. So that way you don't have to do the potion stacking and all that stuff we did earlier. You just throw on your hide armor that you enchanted now, and you can do the exploit. I apologize if this part seemed a bit drawn out. I was trying to make it as easy to understand as possible. And I do promise it saves a lot of time in the long run because you have infinite stamina and things like that that just make this so much quicker when going for the trophies. And this is to go even further beyond. 
Now, just to summarize it all, basically I would have lock picking, you know, pickpocket, stamina, all of that just on those pieces of gear. Uh, the stamina alone is going to give you infinite run, which is amazing when going for the trophies. After that, guys, we can finally continue with the guide. Again, I apologize for how long that took, but it will save you a lot of time in the long run with infinite stamina and being able to one-shot everything. All right, so go ahead and make another backup save because we're about to use 5,000 gold, and you have to be past the Bleak Falls Barrow quest. And then you come speak to, dude, I'm not pronouncing his name, but he's in Dragon's Reach, and he's a bald-looking dude. And just let him know that it's five grand, and then bam, you'll get the Citizen Trophy. And then to save the 5,000 gold, you can just reload your save. <laughs> I just saw his name, and I was like, it's not happening, I'm sorry. All right, sweet, so just reload your save for the 5,000 gold, and now we'll go to Dragon Rising and continue the main quest. Now we've got this very OP gear. We'll just slam through the story like it's nothing. It's just going to be so easy. So yeah, that actually happened. It was the first time that it crashed on me. And basically, you just continue with the main quest. You're going to fight your first dragon, which is going to get you the Dragon Soul Trophy. That'll also give you a shout anytime you absorb the Dragon Soul. So as you can see, we learn a shout right here. And this is the first time you use it. So in order to use a shout, you just press R1 and you equip them through the magic tab when you press circle into that menu. And then you can just select them to equip or you can press triangle to put it on your favorites. And the favorites are accessed by pressing up or down on the D-pad. Now I just wanna show you, as you're going through the game, there's actually these camps here that look like a mammoth tusk icon and they count as dungeons cleared. So even though it's just killing like two giants, it's counted as a dungeon cleared so you may as well do it. And they're a lot faster to clear than a dungeon so that's why they're worth doing. Now you'll find this ritual stone on this mountain for the next uh, kind of quest area that we have to go to. So just make sure you discover that and that'll be another ritual stone for you. As you can see, it's on the right of the mountain here. And we're going to keep going to speak to the Greybeards. Now, once you get to the Greybeards, you're going to learn a shout. And then you'll have another part where you're going to learn another shout. So there's a few shouts to be learned here. And then you have to equip the sprint and try and sprint through the gate. This is for the other trial. And then later on you'll come through this kind of dungeon or cave and then you can find another wall that has a shout on it as well so make sure you grab that before continuing all right guys so go ahead and grab that shout and then continue through the dungeon now make sure you have the whirlwind shout equipped because we're going to need to dash through these gates and you just need to dash through them on time before the gate shuts i don't think you have any idea how fast i really am i'm fast as fuck boy Okay, keep going on with the quest and you'll eventually run into Delphine. No, not the one that sells bath water, but the one in Skyrim. And she'll task you with going to kill a dragon. Now, on your way to the main quest, again, you'll find these sort of camps. And they're worth clearing because all you do is kill the giants and then you get a dungeon clear. Now, after you catch up on the main quest, you will slay this dragon as part of that quest and that'll get you another dragon soul. All right, so as you continue with the quest, you'll come across another stone that you need for that trophy. Um, I'll show you really quick on the map. You can see it's above that city, kind of near the abandoned shack. Now, following that same quest line, you'll eventually speak with this NPC, Malborn, and you just have to give him the gear that you want to sneak into this um, dinner party type thing. Then you want to speak to the lady to get a drink and give the drink to that guy so he makes a scene. Now while they're distracted, you'll be able to go through and grab your items out of a chest. Later on, you'll find some guards, and if you kill them, you can actually get a key. That key's to, you know, open a trap door, and then you can get out. The waypoints will kind of tell you where to go. And then when you finish the quest, you'll get another story-related trophy. So you'll be back at the hideout with Delphine. Now the next part of the quest, you'll just keep going through until you get to um, 
this part here I'm just going to show you little snips like I said you just keep following the quest line um, I don't need to show you how to follow a waypoint it's just going to waste your time so we're actually going to join the Imperials and the reason why is because there's a missable trophy with it so make sure you're following exactly how I am and join the Imperials not the Stormcloaks now eventually you'll be through another dungeon and by the dungeon door is an ebony claw okay and the solution is going to be wolf butterfly and dragon and again I'm just showing snippets of each quest just so you know where I'm at you can pause the video until you catch up but it just saves your time if you're not watching me do all of these dungeons and stuff again I'll have you know noticeable points like this um, you'll come to this dungeon area here and if you go around the right side and then up top and then cross over the bridge I'm gonna show you where the lever is to open the gate just in case you had trouble finding it but it's just up here and it's just this little thing on the wall interact with that and it's gonna open the gate so I'll do my best to make sure you're not stuck or lost and then towards the end of this dungeon is gonna be another shout so make sure you grab that before you leave the dungeon after leaving the dungeon you'll eventually be back here at this hideout and you'll have to give a message to Whiterun and then it'll start another quest called Battle for Whiterun and just keep going through the quest until you get the one that's regained the pale and then you'll start taking over these forts so you'll speak with um, uh, I'm not gonna pronounce her name but you'll just speak with her she's like your commander or whatever and um, yeah just keep going through the quests there's a quest where you have to find the courier and then another quest where you're gonna do another fort there's a few forts that you're taking over and these forts here like you see um, you just pretty much kill the enemies until it's at zero percent and then you beat the quest so you'll have quite a few of these so I'll skip through them so you don't have to watch that but just keep progressing through the same quest that I'm doing just follow all of the quests. We're regaining the, the rift. We're starting compelling tribute. Um, you shouldn't really get lost. Again, I'm trying to make this as streamlined as possible. After doing all of those quests, we'll eventually head to the town of Riften, which you will have to run to, which is great to have infinite stamina. All right, so eventually you'll be here in Riften, and when you enter in the town, there is someone who will stop you, and we can actually get the intimidate portion of the snake tongue trophy. So that leaves just bribe, which we'll get later on down the track. If you get it beforehand too, that's perfectly fine. Um, but then that way, at least you know you're not missing anything. Here's another option to get uh, persuade in case you missed it during this quest when we're inside Riften. Go through all the dialogue, and then you'll be on to the next quest, which brings us back to our like commander, and we'll just keep doing some more forts. Um, and some ambush attacks again I'm just skipping through these quests you can basically see where I'm at but I don't need to hold your hand you guys got this like you don't even need me I'm, I'm just here to be here now after you complete the Fort Greenwall you should get the war hero trophy which is another missable so it's a really good one to knock out we're getting through these missables and now you should be on a reunification of Skyrim quest line Look at this little shit. He thought he could get away from me. Pfft, not up in here. All right, so we've taken over the fort. Then you get sent to Fort Amal. You go ahead and kill all the Stormcloaks there as well. Um, again, it's a lot of just killing and taking over forts. Very, very easy quest line, but um, a few missable trophies. So again, just make sure you're doing what I do. All right, so then you'll be at this part here with Ulfric, and they'll be beating the shit out of him and you'll get a trophy for it you'll get the hero of skyrim so we knocked out a few missable trophies with that quest line again you needed to side with the imperials in order to get that trophy so please please do that after that you can start the a cornered rat quest by tracking it so that way you get a waypoint and we're going to talk to brinyoff if i'm pronouncing that correctly if not it's the dude from the thieves guild Make your way to Riften and speak with him and go through his quest dialogue. Now, he's going to go down into the sewers, which is where the Thieves Guild is located. Um, this next part of the quest is actually kind of shit, if I'm honest with you. Um, this Esbrin dude, is a he's a dick. Make sure he's following you, because if he's not, it's a pain in the ass to find him again. He's usually back here in the sewer. 
So again, as you're running out of the sewer, just make sure he's following you. Otherwise, it's a pain in the ass. All right, guys, so keep going on with the quest. Um, you'll be back in this area with Delphine and Esbern. And then you'll be um, tasked with going to the Sky Haven Temple. Now, eventually, once you are in the temple, there's a puzzle right at the start. I'm going to zoom in here for you. Those are what it needs to be switched to. So you can see they're all the um, circle thing, like with, uh, with wings. And yeah, I don't know what it is, to be honest. But uh, if you do that, it's going to lower a bridge. And then progress with the quest, and you'll go through some more dialogue, and you'll get another story-related trophy. You'll then start the Throat of the World quest. Now you'll end up back at the Greybeards and they're going to teach you some more shouts. And once you learn this first shout here, it's actually going to finish off um, a full shout. So you'll get a trophy for it. It's called Words of Power. And it's for actually having a full shout, which is three different shouts or three different parts of a shout to make that full shout. Take a shot every time I say shout. Again, you'll get some more of them, the shouts that is. God damn it. You do learn quite a bit of shouts in this part of the quest. Um, and you get a clear sky shout as well, which lets you actually clear the path from the storm. Yeah! Now you're going to work your way up the mountain until you get to the very top with Mr. Dragon Tails up here. And there's going to be another word of power on the wall. So make sure you grab that and just go through the quest dialogue. Um, there's a fair bit of dialogue there. All right, so after that, you're going to end up going towards the Winterhold area. And on the way up towards Winterhold, you'll actually find another standing stone. And this was actually the last one I needed for the trophy. Um, if this wasn't your last one, that's fine. I'm going to have a, a little map at the end that'll show you the locations, and then you can clean it up at the end of the guide. Um, so once you get here, there's actually someone guarding the bridge and another option for you to get Persuade in case you haven't gotten by now, which you should have if you've been following the guide. And once you go through her dialogue, you're going to get a trophy called Gatekeeper, which is part of the Mage's Guild quest line, which we won't be doing just yet. We're just going to do the main story part of things and then we'll come back. Okay, so the main quest will make us find Septimus Cygnus. And a quick way out of here is actually just jumping off the cliff. I'm super lazy, so that's what I did anyways. It's just a bit of a quicker way to get to the quest objective. And after you speak to Septimus, he's going to send you through this very unnecessarily long dungeon. Um, I have it at 2000 speed. There's no real tricks like puzzles or anything like that. So I don't really think it's worth showing. Because um, again, this dungeon is just so long. I, I have infinite stamina and it still took so long to get through. Um, there's a few things you can pick lock, which is good. But yeah, honestly, I have no idea why they made this this long. Um, it wasn't too bad until I got towards the end right here. Yeah, and then right here at the end is where I realized I wanted to commit Sudoku because um, yeah, I got stuck and had to reload my save and do all of that over again. So um, yeah, please smash like on the video. Uh, save some of my sanity, thank you guys. You'll get to this beautiful mushroom area and then towards the end you will have a puzzle. Now you put the lexicon cube in the right pedestal and then as you can see I have this number indicator on the actual puzzle. You want to have the pillar on the right pressed three times and then this one towards the left area pressed twice. After you've done that you'll see the lights come out of the actual device and then you just want to press one. Now it's going to drop down and open up this little kind of gemstone thing and there's going to be the Elder Scroll inside. You want to make sure you grab it and the moment you do grab it you're going to get a trophy but also before you leave after grabbing it you want to make sure you go back up towards the top where the puzzle is and grab the lexicon cube. This is for a quest we need later on. I'm just letting you know to grab it because only idiots don't grab it. And then you have to run all the way through that dungeon again. And I totally didn't have to do that. 
I really want to commit Sudoku. After that, and you've grabbed the lexicon and left that dungeon, you can proceed with the main quest. The good news is we're getting closer to finishing the main story. Um, you're going to learn a fair bit of shouts throughout this weird little vision thing in the um, quest that we're on. Now a bit later in the quest, you will speak with Esbern and you will get a few shouts from it as well. Now we'll be in Dragon's Reach back in Whiterun, and you want to make sure you equip the Call Dragon Shout and run up the stairs and go onto the Great Porch. Now on the Great Porch, after calling the dragon with the shout, you'll lure him in here and then capture him. Now it's good to have a backup save before this because if you talk to the guard up top to free the dragon, for some reason the dragon starts attacking you. It doesn't make any sense because you're basically supposed to set him free. But you actually have to not talk to this asshole and just press the chain yourself. Alright, so after you free him, you'll later on come to another dungeon. The solution is the Eagle Snake Eagle, and that'll open up this gate. And then further on down the track, there will be the Fox, Butterfly, and then Dragon. Just quick little puzzle answers for you guys to make this nice and seamless. Now you will finally be on the final boss, Alduin, and you'll one shot him because you have OP gear since you did the exploit and you just slam through the whole game nice and easy. Alright so that gets you the Dragon Slayer trophy and a few shouts from him. Now after that we can start doing our side cleanup which is the companion's quest line. This is located in White Run. So if you travel to White Run and then go over to the Jor Vasker building, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, we can start the Companions quest line. So we've finished the main story and we're already on the cleanup stuff, guys. Now, once you're inside the living quarters, speak with them at the very end, Vilkis, and you will start the quest line. Take up arms will be the first trophy that you get. I'm going to show an overview of the quests that you get as well. So those are the quests in order that you should be doing. Um, and yeah, I'll just go through them and I'll stop at any point that, you know, kind of needs to. But you'll eventually be at a dungeon for one of the quests. We have to retrieve a fragment and there'll be a word of power on the wall where the actual fragment is as well. Now all of these little guild quest lines are pretty quick, so we should be able to smash right through them. Now, what you want to do is, after the dungeon, make your way back and speak to Farkas. Farkas will give you a random NPC that you need to fist fight. So, make sure you speak to him, because his is like the easiest, and it's going to continue the quest chain. And then, eventually, you'll have to drink this blood ritual and become a cursed doggo. Now, there's a DLC trophy we can get while we're a werewolf as well. And even though this is a guide for the base game, I figured I'd include this just because it's an easy way to get the DLC trophy, and it's more trophies for you guys, and I feel like I wouldn't be helping you out if I didn't at least show you. Okay, so continue with the guide until you meet Ayla, and she is going to give you a nice, beautiful trophy. Now, you're going to be clearing out a bunch of forts, and while you're doing that, I want you to feed on all of these um, enemies. To feed on someone, after you kill them, you just press X while aiming the cursor at them. The more people you feed on, the more perks you're going to get. And the DLC trophy is to get 13 perks, which is basically unlocking all of the skills in the werewolf tree. Now later on, you're going to be tasked with killing these witches. The Glen Moral witches. You're going to actually want to grab two heads. So as you can see, the quest completed but you want to run and find the other waypoint and grab another witch's head. We'll need it for later so that way we can cure the doggo curse that we have. Now you're going to have a meeting in a circle within the companion's quest line and after this it's going to give you an objective to go to another area. Do not go to that area yet. We're going to get that DLC trophy as well as one of the other base game trophies. So what I want you to do is make a backup save. You can see we need to go to the tomb with the circle, but we don't want to do that yet. So please do not do that yet. Just make a backup save. We're going to try and smash out two trophies. So one of them is Werewolf Mastered, which is getting all the perks for Werewolf. And the other one is Master Criminal for getting a thousand bounty in all of the cities. 
I'm going to quickly show you all of the cities again. And you need to have a thousand bounty. When you transform into the werewolf, you instantly get a thousand bounty. But whenever you attack guards, you're going to get them as well. And you're going to want to attack and feed on the guards anyways, because it's going to go towards the perks. And this should take about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how fast you are. So 20 to 30 minutes of killing guards in all of the cities to get all of the 13 werewolf perks. And of course, you'll be going for Master Criminal for the 1,000 bounty in each city. Another thing you can do as well if you have high magic or if you did the exploit to have a bigger magic pool is you can use Raise Zombie on the guards that you've killed and fed on. And for some reason, when you Raise Zombie, as you saw on the top left, they actually give you a heart consumed, which is towards your perks as a werewolf. I'm not sure why that is, but again, as you can see, heart consumed, werewolf perk progress increased. That's what we're trying to get. So that's the same message you get whenever you feed on them. And you can also do it when you raise zombie. It just basically gives you a bit more for your kills, but it's not hard to go to all the cities anyway, since you need master criminal and just grinding it out. Now, once you have a thousand in every area, you can see here I must have missed winter hold because I only have a 40 bounty, so I need to go back there and cause a bit more havoc. But this is a good way for you to check your crime status tab and then know exactly where you're missing the bounty or um, pretty much any statistics like dungeons cleared, um, shouts collected, and things like that. But once you've got a thousand bounty in all of the cities that I've listed, then you will get the Master Criminal Trophy. Now, after all of that, you'll likely still need to kill a few more guards in order to max out your perk or skill tree as a werewolf. And once you've done that, it's going to pop the Werewolf Master Trophy. So again, you should still have to grind a few guards after that, but it shouldn't take too long, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes if you're just killing every guard you see. Now, after you've popped the Mastered Werewolf Trophy or Werewolf Mastered Trophy, whatever you want to call it, you've got the 13 Werewolf Perks. Make sure you reload your save. It should be about 20 to 30 minutes ago of when you reload, depending on how long that did take you to get the trophy. But you will know it's the right save if you're still in Whiterun and you're on the quest to go to the tomb. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, it's like 3 a.m. and I forgot that I put that in there and I just lose my shit and... It's so late over here, like, I'm trying to smash through this for you guys, but I'm literally so tired to the point where I was thinking, like, have you noticed you don't ever really stop clapping? The The length in between claps is just extended? Does that, does that make sense? I'm gonna get some sleep, guys. Alright, guys, so you'll be in this dungeon, and you'll see this giant area. There's a bunch of, like, spirits and stuff. You'll just slay them really quickly, and then you'll come up over here where Farkas is, and to the left of him is actually some spider webs that we can chop through. Um, you can just smash through those and continue through the dungeon. Um, we must be like in an Australian dungeon or something because I mean look at the size of these spiders. And then once you get to the end of the dungeon, you're going to have to fight a spirit in order to save his spirit. It's, it's a lot of like voodoo shit, you know? And then once you've done that, um, you're gonna get the glory of the dead trophy now you remember me saying to grab an extra head of the witches The reason is because you'll see that we still have beast form here Which means we're still affected by the wolf as long as you've done all of the trophies I told you to do then you're gonna cast that extra head that we grabbed into the fire That's actually gonna summon an evil spirit of yourself and once you kill it You'll be cured from the werewolf curse all right, so that finishes off the companion's quest line. So now we're gonna do the mage's quest line, which is in the College of Winterhold. Now, again, as I did for the other quest line, I'm gonna have the quest on screen for you. That way you know which ones you need to go for. Um, we're starting with first lessons, of course, and all of these quests are actually really quick for the mage's ones, so you can smash them out fairly quick. Alright, so we're starting at first lessons is the quest that you should be on since we grabbed it during the main quest if you've been following my guide. Um, and then we'll just start following the objectives. You'll eventually be in a dungeon that actually requires you to use magic to get through a doorway. Um, it requires fire magic, so just equip whatever fire magic you have 
and just launch it at it and that's going to smash open the doorway now further on in the dungeon I'm just gonna show you because it can be a bit confusing there's gonna be a puzzle and you can actually see the answer is behind the pillar so just match up the pillar to the picture behind it it's up towards the top and behind it and again you can see the snake in the background so there's the snake and then up there is the whale and that's it after you've lined that up perfectly you pull the lever and you'll get through then you'll find another puzzle a bit later on and you actually want to go to the top right one first and make it an eagle then go to the bottom right one and make it a whale and just think of them facing inner and there you go but you only have to move those two so it's nice and easy um, and that's it after that you'll keep going through the quest lines and outside of the college you'll eventually have to go in this trap door and it's just over here from the center you can see it on the corner over here it's kind of where we jumped off actually for that one quest earlier on in the guide and this will be another dungeon you run all the way through and then this next puzzle you actually need an ice spell and if you don't have an ice spell there's one on the table behind you and it'll teach you an ice spell now the reason you need an ice spell is you'll see these lights are all pointing up and whenever you use an ice spell on it it's going to move those lights I want you to keep using the ice spell on it until you have the lights lined up exactly how I do you can see I have one going to the left, one going to the right, and then one kind of going behind us. Then what I want you to do is go to the top and press the one on the right and you should see it line up. Then press the one in the middle and again that should line up just nicely like that. And then press the one on the left for the final one to match and then you'll be um, asked to speak with Paratus. After you complete all of that, you'll be back at the actual college and you'll see the orb kind of have this explosion cut scene and Mirabelle will be injured on the ground but you'll get a trophy from it. So, um, I mean, her pain is your gain, right? So later on you'll be going through a dungeon and in this dungeon, just so I can show you really quick there's actually a word of power on the wall and this is why I also told you to end up making an OP dagger is it's just so much faster than like a giant sword or um, you know pr pretty much any other weapon It's just really fast attack speed now keep going through the quest line you'll eventually have like a final boss fight and you'll use this staff that's basically gonna deactivate the orb so keep blasting the orb until it's deactivated and then that actually makes him vulnerable to attacks and then we're just gonna go run up and one shot him with our dagger and that's literally the quest um, you'll have a bit of dialogue and then you'll get your last trophy for the mages guild so ultimately nothing too challenging there or tricky you should be able to just follow along with what I've shown you and then get the trophy alright so up next we're going to be doing the thieves guild quest line which is actually a pretty fun one overall in my opinion um, not that you asked. So to start this one, we're going to speak with Brynjolf in the Riften Town Square. And he's going to give you a chance arrangement quest. Go ahead and go through the quests. Now I know there's a bit on the screen, but basically it's showing the quests that are in the Thieves Guild and what's required. And the way it works at the end is a little bit different, but I'll explain that when we get to that point in time. Now the first quest is basically just breaking open this lockbox and if you did the exploit for like max lockpicking then you can easily just lockpick that and then you have to plant that on him so in order to do that you just go through the list and press square and that'll plant it on him. Now on that you can just keep going through the quest. Alright so once you're at the end you can speak with the slithery snake. I'm a snake. Ask to convince her to pay and then you can go to Kirava and threaten her to pay. Now when you speak to her you can just go through the dialogue options and eventually you'll threaten her with the farm in Morrowind and then that'll be an objective complete. 
Now the next area we go to is actually right next to this inn. So after that you can leave. And then immediately go to the right and then you'll find the pond prawn. And once you're inside, you actually just need to smash his vase or urn, whatever you want to call it. And then he will finally agree to pay. So go ahead and speak with him. He says he'll pay and then you can just leave. Now the next and final place is actually nearby as well. It's just to the left and over the bridge and then to the right after the bridge. And this is for Helga's bunkhouse. Now, if you speak with her, you'll basically say you have a message and she will give you the payment straight up. She was the smartest one out of all three because she just paid and that is the quest done. So keep going through the next quest. Now we're back at the Thieves Guild so you can just turn in the quest and that's actually going to be another trophy related to the Thieves Guild. Alright, after that, keep going ahead, you'll eventually get another quest, and you have to destroy some beehives and basically pick lock a safe. Once you make your way through the entire house, in the bottom area of the house is the safe itself, and if you have that exploit, you can easily just crack into the safe with no issues. And then you can make your way back up top and destroy the beehives as well. You can just burn them with magic or whatever you have available. After that you'll keep going through another quest and then you'll have this dungeon and if you poison this nest then you can leave through the tunnel on the left side and after you make your way through that part you'll eventually hit the vat and then you can poison the vat by going up the stairs. You can then leave the area, speak back with the quest giver and then when you're inside the actual brewery house if you go up the stairs in the very back part of the house Walk all the way around and you will find a door. You can open that if you do have the key. And then you can go inside his dresser and steal the quest item. After you've done that, you'll eventually come to this part in a quest where you're sneaking around in a dock sort of area. It doesn't really matter if you got caught from what I've noticed, so you can just run through and kill everyone. When you get to the end as well, there's a lot of these chests that are on the actual shelves over here and this will help get towards the 50 lockpick trophy. Now progress with the quest line and you'll eventually have to go meet with Mercer Frey and on my way there I saw this. To infinity and beyond. Now I'm convinced somehow Roach made his way into the world of Skyrim but I could be wrong. My leg. My leg. Now once you make it to Mercer Frey you actually have to wait for his slow ass to open the door and then when you're going through the dungeon, you should find a chain at some point to open this gate. I figured it was worth showing just in case you do get lost. So we're just making our way through the dungeon right here. And I figured I'd at least show the chains to open the gate just in case you got lost. Now they're normally near the gate most of the time. Later on, you'll get to this point here where you're sort of on a ledge. And actually behind it is going to be a word of power or a shout on the wall. So before you leave, make sure you grab that, and that'll count towards your 20 shouts learned. After that, you're going to get to this part with a puzzle. Thankfully, you actually don't have to do anything, and Mercer does the puzzle for you. Now, on your way to the next quest objective, you'll be in the Understone Keep in Markarth. And we can actually get a trophy here that we were working towards. Quickly, just make a quick save, and then attack someone nearby the guards. And we're going to get our last part of the Snake Tongue Trophy. So we need to bribe a guard. You can see this option here to pay the guard. And once you do that, that should be your final one. If you are missing any, there's going to be another option up ahead if we continue with the quest. And then you can kind of see which one you're missing. But ultimately, if you follow the guide correctly, you just got the Snake Tongue Trophy. Alright, so once you get to Calselmo, probably not pronouncing that correctly, but he has Bribe, Persuade, and Intimidate. The bribe option I find doesn't work here, like I have high speech and this dude was just still being an asshole. So um, you should be able to get intimidate or persuade there with no issues in case you are missing those specific ones. Now eventually you're going to come to this stone as part of the quest. 
and you actually need to make a copy of it. So in order to do that, on this table back here, you'll see like a book and things like that. Those aren't important, but what you do need is a roll of paper, and next to it is a piece of charcoal. Now after you make the copy, there will be some guards that come inside the room. Um, I just ran past them, so you know you can kind of just run through them, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I lit one of them on fire, I'm a bit sadistic. But yeah, you can just leave the room, kind of mow, mow your way through there, and then continue with the quest line. You'll eventually complete hard answers, and it's going to start the new quest, The Pursuit. Now you come to this part where you need to break into the house, and you can either steal the key from him or just pick lock the gate, doesn't really matter. And then you can just go and hit him up from behind. You're, he's gay! I'm not gay. He's gay! And we need to pull out a bow. If you have a bow, magic might work as well, I'm not entirely sure. So just shoot the gear that's going to cause the bridge to fall down. And then you can make your way up towards the top and break into the house with the key that you got off the guard. Just try not to be bad like me and fall off. Now once you make your way inside, there's going to be some guards and you know a few enemies. And there's actually this room here that has two cabinets. And the one on the left side says suspicious cabinet. This is actually how you get to the lower floor of the house. And then you can grab the quest item below. Once you've done that, you make your way back to the Thieves Guild, and eventually you will come to this quest where you become a Nightingale. And you can actually, even though it tells you to equip the Nightingale armor, you can equip your armor back immediately, which is super useful if you have the capacity weight exploit, otherwise you're going to be walking super slow. You'll keep making your way through a few quests, and then you'll make your way in this dungeon. And there's a doorway down there, so you just hit the lever, and then quickly run to the opposite side of where that lever was. It's basically directly across from it. You'll find another lever and that's going to open the gate down below. Figured I'd show that just in case you got lost. It's, it's still pretty straightforward. It's kind of a linear dungeon, but that way you're not getting lost. At the end of the dungeon, you're going to slay Mercer Frey. We're going to one-shot him because we're OP as fuck. Now, in the same room, the water is going to start overflowing and you need it to keep rising until it gets into this little area where you can climb up there'll be a tunnel that you can escape out of. So you do have to wait for it for a bit. If you die, you can just reload the save, of course. You'll eventually come to this Nightingale te temple or sort of like a trial. And in the first area, you basically just have to travel through the shadows. If you're not in the shadows, you actually take damage and quite a lot of damage. You can die really quick. So just stay in the shadows to get to the exit. And then the other trial is right here. You'll find this statue with the booby lady. Now, the booby lady has two secrets. Not those, dude. Jesus. I'm talking about how you get past this part. So in order to get past it, there's actually a chain behind the torches on each side. And if you activate both of them, there's going to be this secret doorway behind her. And it's that easy. You defeated the booby lady. All right. So, oh God, another booby lady. You come up to another booby lady um, named Nocturnal. So if you need to, we can take a fat break, but this is basically where you choose your role as a Nightingale. Um, I decided to choose the role of Stealth, which I found to be pretty useful throughout the remainder of the game. By all means, it's not like it's necessary, you can choose whatever, um, but I did go with the Stealth one. After that, you're going to get a trophy, and that'll be the Darkness Returns completed. And then you'll go back to the Thieves Guild, and now we're going to start learning about jobs. So I'm going to explain this as best as I can, so try to follow. It's not too confusing, so I'll just make it as easy as possible. Now, when you're in the Thieves Guild, if you speak with Delvin and Vex, they're going to give you different jobs to restore the Thieves Guild back to glory, which is for a trophy. Now, you want to basically ask for extra work, and for Delvin, you always want to do the fishing jobs. They're nice, quick, and easy, and there's a certain job to choose with Vex as well. Basically how it works is you want to complete five jobs in each city. Not every city, but each of these listed cities. So you need them in Windhelm, Whiterun, Solitude, and Markarth. You need five in each of them, and then it's going to basically suggest to do a special mission. As you get further along, after you do the special mission and let's say Windhelm, you can then quick save when you go to turn in the quest. 
So that way, if you don't get the city that you want, let's say you needed white run still, but you got rift in, then you can reload the save until you get the proper city that you need. That's more so down the track once you've done quite a bit of jobs in each respective city. Now doing it with the quick save method is just going to make it quicker overall. Now you can see the quests do appear in the quest list. And for example, the jobs are really easy. You're just putting a gem on that guy, for example. And then the other type of mission you get is you plant a stolen item in a chest within a building or someone's house. And you can usually find them in the miscellaneous options. I have a lot of random shit in my bag, so hopefully that makes it easier if you don't. And you look for the stolen item, for example, this is the stolen sapphire quest. And then you can press square to store it in the chest, and that'll complete the quest. And those are for Vex's specific quests. So those are the only quests that you'll be grabbing, the fishing jobs and the shield jobs. And then you can go back and turn them into Delvin and Vex. And as you can see, I got a new one in Windhelm. And again, you want to get five jobs completed in those four cities that I listed before. Only after you've done the five will he give you the special missions. One thing I thought worth mentioning, if you get this quest here to go to Heimsker's house, at this point in the quest line, his house is actually destroyed, and it makes this quest impossible to complete. Uh, it took me a while to realize that, so I figured I'd let you know that you could just abandon it and get a different quest if you happen to get that one. Now, something you can do in the meantime while you're doing the jobs, if you want to switch it up, is you can head to Solitude and go to the Rainment Shop, and we're going to go for the Golden Touch Trophy, which is 100,000 gold. Now, at this point in the game, you should have a fair bit of junk that you can sell off, and we also have those exploited armor we made for extra gold. If you don't have those, you can go ahead and make that as well. Go ahead and sell enough items until she runs out of gold, then quick save, stab her, and then reload your save and then sell everything again until she runs out of gold and basically just keep repeating this until you have a hundred thousand gold um, it shouldn't take too long again you're just selling your junk when she runs out of gold you'll do a quick save you can also invest in the shop which increases her total gold which will make it a little bit quicker and just keep doing that and after a while you're eventually going to get the hundred thousand gold Now this poor lady's gonna be dying a lot. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Now don't worry, her suffering wasn't in vain. We eventually did hit the 100,000 gold. You don't have to go for this trophy right now. I thought it would be just a nice way to break up the thieving missions. If you don't go for it then, you can just do it at the end of the guide. We'll be heading back to the Thieves Guild, or just doing that in between, like I said. And then eventually you'll see this, you'll get the special request. Now this is only once you've done the five quests or five jobs within those cities that I mentioned before. And there's a specific job for each city. So go ahead and do the special job that he's given you. And then when you get towards the end and you only need like, let's say one or two special jobs, you can then quick save and try to get the specific one you're after, like I've mentioned on the video. Now, if you have a potion of invisibility, or let's say you went the path of the stealth, you can use this power that you have here, and then whenever you crouch, it makes you invisible. And this was handy for some of the stealth quests. For example, I just went, stole her stuff, and then we could grab our chips and dip. We out of here. She, she still caught me, but you know, we still ran the fuck out of there. We got out. Now, something worth mentioning, you'll come to this place called Pine Watch for one of the special jobs. And at first I had no idea where the hell I was going because there's no marker for it. But if you go downstairs inside the building and next to the bookshelf, you're going to find a red button that's kind of hidden. And that's going to open a path down a tunnel. Just thought I'd let you know because I had no idea where the hell that was. At the end of the tunnel or the dungeon, you're going to get a silver mold which is required for the quest. After you've done all of your special jobs which I don't think anything else is worth showing. Um, I showed you everything I think would be notable. So again, just continue until you finish all of the special jobs and they're gonna wanna promote you to a guild master of the Thieves Guild. After you do that, you'll speak with her to get your guild master armor and that's gonna pop the last trophy we need for the Thieves Guild quest line. And before we leave the Thieves Guild, there's an alchemist nearby that I want you to buy some items from for another quest. We're looking for a Daedra Heart and Troll Fat and you might have the troll fat and the daedra heart already, but if not, go here to buy them. And if he doesn't have them in stock, do the quick save trick, 
hit him, and then reload your quick save. After you've grabbed those, we'll go back to the surface of Riften because we're going to do a cleanup trophy called Thief. You should already have 50 locks picked, but you might not have the 50 pickpockets. So what you can do is keep quick saving and going around and just stealing a random thing from all of the civilians until you hit 50. Once you hit 50, as long as you have 50 of the locks picked as well, then you should pop the Thief trophy. Now you can track this through the general stats in the pause menu. And by going to crime, you can actually see your locks picked and your pockets picked. Jesus Christ, say that five times fast. After that, we're going to move on to the Dark Brotherhood quest line for the Assassin's Guild. Here are the quests you need to look out for. That's the order we're going to do them in. The quest is obtained by speaking to any bartender in the game or the children at the Honor Hall Orphanage in Riften. You might even already have it as well, so you can check in your miscellaneous objectives inside the quest menu as well before we get started. Okay, after you determine if you already had the quest or if you had to go get the quest, then you can go to the waypoint and break inside this house. You're going to speak with Aventus, and he's going to task you with killing the lady of the orphanage. Because, spoiler alert, she's kind of a bitch. So you can walk behind her, pull out your weapon, and then... Surprise, motherfucker! It's just that easy, guys. Get rid of her. Then you'll have to continue... Oh, cheeky little teabag. But then you can continue with the quest. Now, in order to actually continue, you have to just kind of wander around town for a bit, and eventually a courier is going to stop you. He's going to give you a note. Now, once you've got the note, go ahead and go into your items, and then you can actually click on books, and you'll find the mysterious note, and you can open that. After the mysterious note, you can then head inside the inn, which is the Candle Hearth Hall, and rent out a room and then go to sleep. This is going to cause an event to happen. Alright, after you wake up, you'll end up in this building and you'll meet Astrid. This is going to be the main start for the actual Assassin's Guild quest line. Now, you do not want to kill her. You have the option to, but if you do, it will lock you out of the trophy, so please do not kill Astrid. She's going to tell you to kill one of the prisoners. She doesn't realize we're fucking nuts. We're going to kill all three. I'm pretty sure you can get by with just killing one. But but we're going to we're we're just going to kill all three, okay? Then you can speak with her, continue with the quest line. Now, this is where you're going to get your first trophy for the Assassin's Guild. And after this part with Astrid, you'll speak to Nazir, and he's going to give you some contracts to do. It's basically just going around killing some NPCs. They're really quick and easy. Now for killing the NPCs, if they're in a town, you can actually just snipe them with a bow. Boom. Ooh. Bam. Oh. Bop. Then you just make your way back to the Assassin's Guild and actually inside the guild is a word of power that's on a wall. So you can learn another shout within the guild itself. So just keep an eye out for that shout so you don't miss it. You only need 20 for the trophy, but all of these will add up. Okay, so you'll progress with the quest line and you'll end up speaking with Muri. Just so you know, you're heading in the right direction. Now, this may be different for you, but on my way to the quest objective while I was doing this, I actually got the Explorer Trophy, which is for 100 locations. And honestly, we still have a fair bit of the guide left, so if it doesn't pop at this point, that's fine. And again, you can track all of this in the General tab, and that has all your statistics. Now eventually you'll be doing more contracts, and for example this lady was in the middle of the town so I just bit the bullet, killed her, and then you can pay off the bribe or whatever you want to do to, you know, avoid that bounty. You'll have an eavesdropping mission here, and then after that you're going to kill some more NPCs, and a lot of it's just sneaking around and killing. Um, pretty easy overall. Just sometimes the sneaking sort of made me feel like I was like Kronk from Emperor's New Groove, you know? But other than that, it's pretty easy. You just go in, you get the kill, and you leave. You should honestly finish the quest line pretty fast. Um, a lot of it is just killing them and, and leaving. 
All right, so after you do some more contracts for Nazir, you can turn those in, and then you'll complete another quest with Astrid called The Silence is Broken, and then you'll be finally starting the Bound Until Death quest. Now, there's a wedding going on in this castle, and the way I did this a little bit easier was I went invisible with that Nightingale ability. You can use a potion of invisibility as well. And then I sniped her, and all I did was run away until I could fast travel. And then I knew once I could fast travel that I didn't have aggro on me anymore. So as you can see, and on the compass you can see when they're aggroed to you, and I just went towards the back spamming the touchpad until I could wait. And then I knew I could fast travel once it allowed me to do that. So however you want to escape, that's completely up to you. That's what I did, so you can give that a shot if you did choose that stealth ability. Once you turn this quest into Astrid, that's going to give you the Bound Until Death trophy. You'll then start the Breaching Security quest, and you'll have to kill a general. You can just go kill him, and then you need to plant some evidence on their body. And again, by doing that, you just go into your items, and then you press square on the item to store it on his body. And once you do that, there's the incriminating letter, and that's going to complete the quest or get you the next objective. Now you'll head to this sanctuary here as part of the quest. And eventually you'll go through a full dungeon where you can kill Cicero. Um, you can leave as well, but just go ahead and kill him. And just so you know as well, there's a chain hidden right here. And if you use that, it's going to pull down that gate there. thought it might be worth mentioning in that dungeon because it can get confusing. Now you have a quest to kill Anton. Um, again, I just killed this within the city, so you can handle the bounty however you see fit. Um, I ended up paying it because they found my ass. I was not as invisible as I thought. Eventually, you will have some more contacts that you have to kill. Keep following the quest line. You don't need to hide the body. That's optional, so you can skip that. Now, you'll end up being a cook's assistant, basically, and you want to give the jar in route because we're going to basically poison the NPC that we need to kill. Um, you'll get, you know, aggro on you immediately after he dies because they're pretty sure that it was you. I was trying to be smart and went in stealth right as he took his first bite, but no matter what, it looks like they catch you. So once he dies, there'll be a bit of commotion and there'll be guards that come after you. There's actually a door in this back room inside this sort of dining area to escape. You'll see a quest marker. And we're just going to slide our way on out. And eventually you will come to this part in the quest called Death Incarnate. And the good news is once you turn that in, you will start the final quest of this quest line. Now, again, we're just going through the objectives and killing the marked NPCs. After you kill the Emperor, you'll eventually go back through this sort of dungeon area, and there'll be a marker on a, an urn with 20,000 gold in it, and then you'll make your way back to Nazir. Now, you can actually lie to Nazir and keep some gold, which again will help towards the 100,000 gold trophy if you haven't gotten that yet. So you don't have to give him the gold, and the reason being is once we complete this quest, that's actually our last trophy for the quest line. So there is more quests that you can do with him, but we don't need to do any more because that is all for the trophy. That finishes that quest line, and then we can do the Daedric quests. Now there's 15 Daedric artifacts that we need to get, and some of them are missable, so I do need you to follow my instructions. Okay, so when we're going to start, we're going to Solitude. And you want to go around this area, sort of like where the Bard's College is. Now, as you're wandering the area, you'll eventually find this NPC here. And you'll know it's the right one because he literally has no eyes. And you just speak with him and give him one gold. And this is to actually start the Daedric quest line. After that, he's going to give you the next objective, so you just keep going through all of his dialogue options. And you'll start the quest, The Mind of Madness. Now, it makes you go into the Blue Palace, which is just behind you, if you're near the Bard's College. And then it wants you to go in the uh, wing here to the right. And when you're in this area, eventually you'll just go naked and you'll be in some sort of like dream state. 
Now the point of these quests are to get the artifacts. So you'll get your first one right off the bat by speaking to him. And this is the Wabajack. Now we need to use the Wabajack to get out of here. So the first trial on the left, you just have to shoot the enemies that are actually sitting across. And after you've done that, it'll go complete and then you can go over to the next trial. Now once you go to the next trial, you'll see someone sleeping on the stone there, or the bench. And after you blast him, there's going to spawn these NPCs. So just start shooting them all and then more will spawn. And once you go through all of them, then you can go to your next trial. In the next trial, you just have to keep shooting them to shrink them down to his size. And then eventually you complete the trial. After that, you just speak with the guy again and you've completed our first Daedric quest. Now we're on to the next one and this is in Markarth. And you'll find this abandoned house towards the main entrance of the city. And you just want to speak to the Vigilant Tyrannus. Okay, so go through all of his dialogue options to actually get the quest. You may have already spoken to him as well during the main quest. Um, if you did, you can just continue from this quest point. Alright, so once he's giving you the quest, you can go inside the house. As you progress through the quest inside the house, there'll be this altar. And then the altar actually talks to you and wants you to get the priest. You'll go and get the priest and then get him to follow you back to the altar in the house in Markarth. And the reason you need him there is because we are going to kill him and sacrifice him on the altar. So you can just use the Persuade option, and again, if you haven't got that Snake Tongue trophy, you can do a Persuade or Intimidate for this part. Bring him back, and then they will tell you to kill Logrolf with the Daedric artifact that they gave you, which is a mace. Now, he'll keep resurrecting him, and you just have to keep killing him, and then eventually you'll actually get the mace. So that's going to be our second artifact already, and then we can move on to our third quest. Our next one is in Markarth as well and it's actually towards the Hall of the Dead. You're going to speak with Brother Verilus and start the quest, The Taste of Death, and he'll give you the Hall of Dead key. You can use the Persuade option again for this part, and then go into the Hall of Dead. Now, you'll speak with Eola in the Hall of Dead and start the actual Taste of Death quest, and then you'll be speaking to Brother Verilus. Again, you can do Persuade or whatever's easier, and then eventually you'll have to lure Brother Verilus to this um, gathering, we'll call it that. And then you have to kill him on the altar. And then you actually have to eat him. And this quest was really fucked up. A lot of these are actually really, really fucked up quests. And honestly, while my guy was eating it, all I could think... It's fucking Alright, so then you should get the Ring of Namira. And that's our third artifact already. So now we can head to our next quest, which is in Dawnstar, and it's located in the inn. You're going to speak with Arander, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and he's going to give you the Waking Nightmare quest. Go through all of his dialogue, and then we'll continue on with the quest. A lot of these should be pretty quick, honestly. There's one that's a bit long, but you'll slam through it, guys. I know you will. So you need to follow him to the Nightcaller Temple. Now, once you get there, you can speak to him again. And then shortly after, we'll be going inside the temple itself. Now, when inside the temple, I thought it'd be worth showing some parts that may have been confusing. But when you come to this part here, if you actually go over this pillar on the right side, you'll find a pedestal with a book on it. Go ahead and take that book, because you need it for the quest. And then you can see this is sort of the center of the room, just as like a reference point. And he'll follow you throughout the temple as well. So after this, you can kind of use the local map if you need to. It might be a bit confusing, but you can just jump down and go down and start clearing the area of all the enemies. Once you've done that, he's going to have some dialogue options for you, and then you should get the next objective. So once he's following you again, bring him back down and around, and eventually you'll be at this part in the quest with the magical barrier. You need to interact with this stone, or soul gem and that's going to remove the magic barrier and then now that'll bring him through now this is missable if you don't stop him so when you get to the end here when the staff is uh, about to be destroyed you actually want to start attacking him 
if he finishes it and he destroys the staff, then you will not get the artifact. So it can be missable, so please make sure you murder him. And then you can grab the staff from the pedestal. And once you grab it, that's our fourth artifact. So we already have four, and we can move to the next quest. So southeast of Winterhold, up on this mountain, is actually a pillar or a statue. And I show you it there. But this Daedric quest is called the Black Star. So go ahead and speak with the lady at the top by the altar. Now this quest does have two different artifacts, but you can only receive one. Okay, after you're done talking to her, you're gonna get the Black Star quest started. And you can just go to the objective with the um, trapdoor, make your way through the dungeon to the very end, and you can find the artifact by the dead body. Now you can either choose to bring it back to the girl or to whoever the hell that is. We're going to bring it back to the girl we started the quest at. And once you do, you actually enter the star itself. Now once you enter the star, you're going to have to kill the other person that you didn't side with. And since we're OP, we'll just sprint at him and start slashing him. So go through all the dialogue, and then we can go and kill him. Now after you've killed him, you'll go through a bit more dialogue, and then we will grab our fifth artifact. Alright, so after you grab the artifact, we can go to our next quest, which is in Falkreath. And it's in the barracks. And in order to get the um, quest started, when you're down in the barracks, there is a prisoner here to the left. He's going to come up to the gate when you approach it, and you go through the dialogue options and he'll give you a ring. Now there's a trick you can do on this quest to actually get two artifacts, and I'll show you how to do that just in case you miss an artifact, then you're not locked out of the trophy. Alright, he's going to tell you to kill the great beast. As you proceed through the quest, you'll find this deer. And then eventually you'll be sent to this grotto. Now inside the grotto you're going to find Sinding as a werewolf. And just let him know that you've been told to kill him, but you're going to spare his life. What you'll do next is you'll start killing all the hunters in the area. Now after you kill the hunters, he's going to say thank you and all that good stuff because you spared his life. But instead of sparing his life, what I want you to do is betray him. Just kill him. Bruh. And then you can run outside, and there's the other NPC to speak with. And if you tell him that you failed to bring him down, then he's going to let you keep the ring. So as you can see, I pulled up my inventory, and you can see that we actually still have the ring. But now we can get another artifact. If you go back inside where you killed him in his werewolf form, and you interact with his body, you can skin him, and then the aspect will appear. You can go through the dialogue with him. And then you're going to get the savior's hide. Now this is another artifact as well. So you can get two artifacts here, which is great. The ring and the hide. After you finish that, we can move on our next quest, which is in Largushbur, which is southeast of Riften, sort of by the lake in the main area. Now when you arrive, you remember we grabbed a Daedra heart and some troll fat? from earlier after the Thieves Guild. And the reason why is because this quest here requires it. So if you automatically have that in your bags, the next objective will auto-complete, and you'll then have to meet Yamars at the Follow Stone Cove. Now when you're inside here in this dungeon, if you go down, you'll see a campfire and things like that, and there's some trolls here that you'll need to kill, or giants, whatever you want to call them. And keep going through the stream area until you find some bears, and then to the left you can go to the Giant's Grove. Now, once you're in here, after killing the giants, he's actually going to turn on you. So we're going to end up killing him as well, because what an asshole, honestly. So run out and fast travel back to the camp. After the dialogue, you will place the artifact weapon on this sort of shrine. And you just have to make sure you grab it off of the shrine. If you don't grab it, you can technically miss this artifact. So again, make sure you grab the mace. Now before we grab our next quest, I want you to go to any alchemist and buy two potions of cure disease. 
or as many as you can. Um, at least two of them because we're going to run into vampires and you're going to want that to cure the vampiric disease. Now when you arrive at Falkreath, one of the guards will ask if you've seen a dog. This is the start of the quest. He'll ask you to speak to Lod, so go ahead and talk to the blacksmith nearby. Go ahead and speak to him and again make sure you have those cure disease potions. It's going to get rid of vampirism which really sucks to have so whenever you see that you're affected by it you can just take one of those. You have three days in game to take it before you're turned into a vampire. Now after you speak to him it's going to tell you to speak to the dog outside. Now no pun intended this quest is absolute dog shit. Um, you have to actually follow him you can't fast travel to where he's going. And it's like 10 minutes of just walking after this fucking dog. Now after your long ass journey with the dog, you'll go through the dungeon that he brings you to. Um, again, it's filled with vampires, so you need those potions that I mentioned earlier. And then you'll have some dialogue with the statue. Now it tells you to go get a rueful axe. So you'll follow the quest objective, and as you can see, this is how you can check if you have vampirus effect. And it's in your active effect. So whenever that happens, you can always just drink a cure disease potion and it'll get rid of that. And again, just do that within three days of the in-game time, and then you can cure that. We'll need to be a vampire for the DLC, but for now, we don't need that shit. After you do the objective and come back to the statue, you want to tell him to take the axe and the dog. Do not kill Barbus. If you kill Barbus, you will not get the artifact. So make sure you make him take the dog back. If you've done that correctly, you're going to get the Mask of Clavicus Vile. And that's going to be our ninth artifact. So we're already getting to close to the end there. Um, we're going to move to our next quest, which is going to be West of Solitude. And the quest is called the Break of Dawn. If you don't have the quest, you can head straight to this pillar here. It's called the Statue of Merida. And again, it's West of Solitude. So make your way there and you'll tell you're in the right spot once you get there because you'll see this quest that launches you up in the air. Now it makes you go through the temple which is below where you started the quest. Once you get to this part, if you run down the tunnel and make your way up the stairs, you can run all the way around and I figured this was worth showing because it can get a bit confusing in here. And then eventually you'll find another pedestal. Now when you activate these, it's going to shine the light on the next orb and that's going to cause the doors to open. Later on you get to this room here and in order to progress there's this door behind that pillar and you can just run down that tunnel until you get to this spot. Um, I won't show the full thing. It's pretty self-explanatory once you get to that point. And then eventually you'll open the catacombs. Now once you're in the catacombs, you can actually grab your next artifact. Where the light is beaming at, if you activate the pedestal, you're going to get the Dawnbreaker artifact. And then it'll teleport you outside. Now that's going to be our 10th artifact. And for the next quest, we do have to get some items. I'm going to put them on screen just in case you have some now. If not, I'm going to show you how to get them. So the Flawless Ruby is actually south of the Kolskegger Mine, kind of near Skyhaven Temple. You might have a Flawless Ruby like I said, but if you don't, you just jump down into the water over here, swim all the way down and you'll see a crashed boat, and inside the boat you'll see a Flawless Ruby. After you get that, you can go to the Understone Keep in Markarth and we're gonna get a silver ingot so if you go to the blacksmith further down in the keep and then to the right you'll find his shop over here and you can speak with him to get a silver ingot they basically always have these I don't think that they can't have them so if you don't happen to see one do the quick save trick to reload his shop after that you can go to any alchemist for example white run there's Arcadia's cauldron and we want to get the death bell ingredient. If she doesn't have it, you can do the quick save trick as usual until you get the death bell. The last item we need is vampire dust. Sometimes you can get those from the alchemist. If you're not having luck, you can always go to the college in Winterhold. Go to the left to the hall of attainment. And in this room directly to the right is vampire dust on the table. After that, we'll head northeast of Markarth to the shrine of Periite. And you'll find Kesh the Clean here. And he needs those ingredients we gathered for the quest itself. So you should have all of those now. And it's going to let you um, make a potion, basically, that you're going to be sniffing. 
So go ahead and take that fumes in and then you'll go through a pretty big dungeon, but you can run past everything like usual. And at the very end of it will be the quest objective. Go ahead and kill him. Once you've done that, you can go back to Periite. And there's a quick way to exit out of the dungeon like usual. Now, once you make it back, go through the quest dialogue, and this will be for our 11th artifact. It's called Spellbreaker, just to make sure you have that before we continue. Next up, we're going to go to Whiterun, and we're going to the Bannered Mare building, which is in the back of Whiterun. And once you're inside, you'll see Sam, and you want to basically challenge him to a drinking contest for this quest. Now he's a bit of a lightweight, so you get carried away and then you drink until you black out. And then eventually you'll be at this part of the quest. And then you have to find the staff. Now keep going through the dialogue and then you can go over to the quest marker over here in this corner. And as you can see, it just goes to the next objective. Later on you go through this tunnel and you find a portal and you'll be at a dinner party. This is where you get your next artifact. So we're at our 12th artifact, which is the Sanguine Rose. And then after that, you can go right back to the Bannered Mare in Whiterun. Now you just want to ask her if she's heard any rumors lately. And eventually you should get a quest that tells you to um, ask about some strange children. So keep saying that until you get that quest, and you can track it in the miscellaneous quest log. Now the quest is called the Whispering Door. Once you get inside of this area in Dragon Reach, if you go to the left, and then down in the cellar. You'll see the quarters there, but if you go to the right, you can actually find the whispering door. Now you need a key for it, so to get it, you go to the Jarl. You can quick save before in case you fail the pickpocket. We have a 90% chance, so we easily do it because we're boss. And then once you get through the door, you already get your 13th artifact. It's just that easy, guys. Alright guys, so we only have two more left. If you go northwest of Winterhold, where Septimus Cygnus' outpost is, now you'll speak with him once you're here, and this quest is called Discerning the Transmundane. You'll see the Wretched Abyss, and you'll go through their dialogue options. And now we have to try to get this cube to absorb different types of blood. So south of Morthal is Ranaveg's Fast. And as you make your way through the dungeon, right off the bat, you're going to find a word of power. So you can quickly grab that and then continue through the dungeon. There's a tunnel actually um, right at the start as well. You'll eventually get to this point where you find a lever. And then you can go through the doorway, make a right. And then as you go down here, there's actually this spot over to the right with a warlock. If you run up and kill him, we can get three of the five blood that we need. You can grab the key off of him as well if you don't need any more lockpicks. Open the gate, and you can grab the wood elf. So just interact with him, and then hit harvest blood. And that is one out of the five that we need. There should be the assistant here that you can harvest blood from as well, which is a dark elf. And then if you use the key to go inside this gate, You'll find an orc in the water, and if you press X on him, you can harvest the orc blood as well. So we got three out of five that easily. After that, you can find the exit here to the right, and then you can make your way back out to the main world, and then fast travel to our next spot that we need to go to. After that, we're going to go to Shimmer Mist Cave, which is northeast of Dragon's Reach. As you go through here, there's going to be a giant spider, and you'll keep going through the tunnel and then make a left. You'll see him coming out of this tunnel here. It's a Falmer, and we actually need Falmer blood. So if he would stop sliding down the damn hill, you can then harvest the blood, and that's our four out of five. And for the fifth one, it's actually just a bit more east from Shimmer Mist Cave. It's in Fell Glow Keep. So fast travel there if you have it unlocked. And outside, you should be able to find the last one that you need, which is a High Elf. If not, you can go inside and look for them as well. Make your way back, and Septimus actually just gets thanos And then you can grab the book off of the pedestal. 
Now this book is actually considered an artifact and when you read it you can also gain some free levels. When you use it as well it doesn't erase it from being an artifact. So that's 14 out of 15 and again read it and you can choose which levels you'd like and for example I chose magic and then all of my magic skills just started leveling up. Now if you've been following the guide this should be your last one and this one's located in Dawnstar. You'll head over to this building here. Now speak with Silas. He's going to give you a quest called Pieces of the Past. This will be for our final Daedric artifact. And then what you want to do here is you can persuade this guy to give you the key and then you can proceed through the quest until you get to the objective of going to this dungeon. You'll find this door here called Dead Crone Rock and then eventually you'll find that spiral wooden staircase. Make your way to the top and then go through this door. It can get a bit confusing. The waypoint is a bit stupid at this area, so just pay attention to what I showed you there. You'll eventually find this part on top of the tower, and then you'll find a witch up here with a word of power in the background on the wall as well. So go ahead and kill the witch. Make sure you loot her body as well for the quest item. And then before you leave, grab the word of power off of the wall. So we're basically grabbing pieces of the artifact so that way we can forge it together. After you've grabbed that, we'll head to our next area. You can just fast travel. Now, once you're here and you kill him to get the key, you can then go from his room back out this door and you'll find a lock for a gate. You can use the key he gave you to open up the vault. So head down into the vault itself and once you're in here just keep going all the way down there will be like some traps and things like that but you can just ignore them you activate the lever on both sides to open the gate and then we can grab the other piece of the razor you'll head back to Silas and then you'll be headed to an altar to meet him there and before he runs away you want to make sure you kill him so you can get the artifact okay so go ahead and kill him really quick and then after you do that, it's going to tell you to speak with Dagon again. And you'll head back to the altar and speak to him and then activate the artifact to put it together. And once you do that, that'll be your trophy, 15 out of 15. Now I will still show the final artifact in case you do need it, but if you don't, you can use the timestamp below to skip it. If you need this one, just go to Whiterun and head to the Drunken Huntsman. Now once you're inside, you're going to hire Janassa as a mercenary to follow you around. And that's because this quest requires you to have a follower. So I go ahead and hire her, and then I just make sure that she follows you outside just because the game can be a bit dodgy. Now I'm going to show you where to head to on the map in case you don't have the Boetha's Calling quest. You can quick save as well here in case you mess anything up. But basically, we're going southeast of Windhelm. On this mountain, you'll find a shrine. So as you can see, this I'm not pronouncing that, by the way, Jesus. Um, so yeah, southeast of Windhelm. And as you progress through the quest, you actually have to sacrifice your follower. After you sacrifice your follower, she wants you to prove you're worthy. So go ahead and kill the remaining. This is also maybe a subtle message. I'm not really sure what's trying to be said here. But yeah, you should go for it. It's much appreciated. After you've done that, you'll end up at this camp as you progress through this quest. You'll have to go inside as well. Just make sure you kill everyone. They all have an arrow on the compass. And once you kill the final person, you will find the ebony mail in your inventory and it wants you to find and equip it. And that's actually our 16th artifact. So again, that's one you can use in case you missed one. What's that? You want a nice easy trophy? Yeah, sure, why not? We'll head to Solitude next and just keep wandering around until you find some kids running around chasing each other. Now what you're going to do is play tag with them and all you have to do is actually spam X. As you can see, I have 34 miscellaneous objectives and I'm just going around spamming X on him and continuously tagging him and then I get the trophy. The trophy is for doing 50 miscellaneous objectives and you can literally just spam tag to get that trophy. 
Next, we are going to do 10 side quests. I chose some of the shorter side quests that I could find just to make this much quicker on you guys. One you should have basically finished if you follow the guide is the Golden Claw. And all you have to do is go inside here, speak with the vendor, and mention the Golden Claw to him with some dialogue options. After that, that's going to be quest completed, and it's our first quest out of the 10. Alright, so once that's been done, we'll head to our second quest, which is Hilgrun's Tomb. You can see it's very east of Whiterun. Now, the next quest we're going to do is actually called Ancestral Warship. Um, there's this NPC outside of the tomb itself. Go ahead and speak with him to start the quest, and then you basically clear out the dungeon. So, kill all of the enemies. It should be nice and quick, especially if you're using an OP dagger. And then there is a spot I thought worth showing, which is this chain by the fire. And you need that to progress through the dungeon. It's going to open that doorway there, so in case you get lost, that's how you do it. After you speak to him again after clearing the dungeon, that's going to be your second quest. So we're already smashing these out. We're going to head to our next quest, which is in Riften. And it's at the B and the Barb, which is the inn. Once you're inside the inn, you'll find this guy at the very back. Lewis, and he's going to give you a side quest called Promises to Keep. After you grab the quest, go through the objectives until you have to break into a house. Go ahead and clear out the house of all the enemies, and keep following the objective as you go through the house. You're going to go all the way to the bottom to get what we need for the quest, and it's on top of a dresser. After you grab that, you can head to the objective on the map and then you'll be speaking with Lewis again. Once you turn in the quest, that's going to be our third quest completed. All right, next up, we have our next quest, which is southeast of Riften. It's going to be in Foral Host Tomb or Dungeon, and you can see that it's called Siege on the Dragon Cult. Now, you're going to go through the whole dungeon, and I kind of just sped through it so you can kind of see where to go. Eventually you go towards the middle of that cell and then down in the water. Keep going all the way through. It's a lot of running, but you can go through it pretty damn quick, especially with infinite stamina. Um, I will say use the local map if you get lost. It's very easy to get lost in here. This area has a gem that's zapping at you. And then over here on the right side by the bookcases, you can find a claw. Once you pick up that claw, it actually opens this gate over here because it's on a pressure plate. And then you can head through this door up ahead, and then eventually you'll find the puzzle. And you need to put it on the wolf, owl, and snake. Now after you open the door, progress to the next objective. And once you're there, you can just kind of loot through everything and then return to Valmir. And you can go out the exit, of course, to make it a quick exit back into the open world and then you have to actually kill the guy who gave you the quest after you do that that's going to be our fourth quest complete and then we can move on to get our fifth quest now the next one is in Morthal and it's in the Moor side inn so once you make it here I want you to run all the way down to the Moor side inn you'll then speak with the innkeeper and ask if you have any work and say is business slow in Morthal and just keep talking to her until she gives you the quest we need eventually you'll say is there a story behind the burned down house once that dialogue option appears go through all of the dialogue and it should start the side quest laid to rest now once we're outside we can then head to speak to the Jarl after getting that next objective now once you're here go through all the Jarl's dialogue and then you have to go investigate the house. Inside the house, you're going to find a ghost, go through all of the dialogue, and then you need to find them once it's dark. If you need to, you can use the wait option on the touchpad. And then if you actually go back up on this mountain behind the house, you're going to find a coffin. You're also going to find a vampire. So go ahead and kill the vampire. And that's going to trigger an event after you speak with the child's coffin or interact with it. You'll see Thoner come running up and then he'll ask you a few different things, go through all of his dialogue and then it'll tell you to investigate Alva's house. 
make your way into Alva's cellar, and you'll find out that she's also a vampire. So go ahead and kill her, and then you'll be sent to the next objective after you grab the journal in this room. So make sure you do grab the journal. You're going to show the journal to the Jarl, and then it'll say to kill the Master Vampire. Now the Master Vampire is in this dungeon where the objective takes you. So follow all the way through. And as you get to the very end of the dungeon, you'll see them at a dinner table. Now these are all vampires again as well, so hopefully you have a potion of cure disease. If you don't, you can just go buy one and just use it before the three days. After you kill the master vampire, go back to the Jarl, and that is another quest complete, guys. Our fifth quest, we're halfway there. Now for our next quest, we're going to head over to Markarth, and we're going inside the Silver Blood Inn. You'll find this guy named Degain. Go ahead and go through his dialogue options, and eventually you'll get a quest to steal the statue in the Temple of Dibella. Now, while you're going to steal the statue, you actually want to get caught. So if you sort of walk your way up, she's going to detect you. And the reason why you want to get caught is you're actually going to get a side quest from her. Now that should fail the steal the statue quest, and then it should start the Heart of Dibella. Once you get that quest, go ahead and follow the objective on the compass, and eventually you'll go to this village. Start speaking to the civilians, like this guy for example, and start asking about the girl. Eventually it's going to send you to rescue her, and when you go through this entire tower or dungeon, whatever you want to call it, there's going to be a cell at the top, and we can go ahead and let her out. Now thankfully this isn't an escort quest, you can just open up the cell, go through her dialogue options, and then go to the next objective. Now eventually you'll be back at Hamal. And after her quest objective and her dialogue, it's going to have you pray at the altar, which is back upstairs. So make your way upstairs and then to the altar. And once you're at the altar, you just do a quick pray by interacting with it. And that is quest 6 out of 10. Now the next quest you should have had sitting in your quest log for quite some time. It's called In My Time of Need. And we're going to head to Whiterun and speak with Sadia. Now, after you speak with her, you're going to speak with one of the warriors that's actually hunting her down. And then you basically have to choose sides. Now, I chose not to side with her because if you choose to side with her, you have to do like a bunch of other shit. And we want the trophies faster. So go ahead and betray her. Go ahead and lie and say we have to meet at the stables. And then head to the White Run stables and the warrior will be there ready to ambush her. Now after that you'll just speak with the warrior and that will be quest number seven completed. Alright guys so now we'll be going to our eighth quest which is in solitude at the Bard's College. Make your way into the college and speak with Viarmo. And you'll get a quest called Tending the Flames. Now, just go to the next objective. Now, once you're here, you're just going to make your way through the dungeon. And eventually you'll get to a door that you can open with a chain. And then you can just run through, and it has a similar door after this tunnel as well. You might have a few enemies to kill, you can just quickly smash through them. That's actually not the way you go. Um, but just so you see, because there is kind of like a hidden switch here there it is it's just in that corner and then you can just run through all the way at the end of the tunnel eventually you'll come to this chain and then you can open it and jump down into the well now keep going through this area and then you'll find another spot that you can jump down by activating a chain and go down the spiral staircase and then you'll find a door with a handle next to it or a rock door whatever you want to call it Use the handle to open the rock door, and then there's the quest item, which is a book. Which apparently is a bitch to grab. <laughs> so you grab King Olaf's verse, and then you can return back to the Bard's College. 
So it's a little bit of a big dungeon, but there is a quick way out. There was a door that had a magical barrier on it, which should be dispelled now. And if you make your way to the very end, you will find a door. And it needs to be wolf, eagle, wolf. And then you can activate it with the claw. After you open the puzzle door, you'll just keep going towards the end of the dungeon. And you can find a word of power as well. So you should be getting closer to having the 20 words of power. And I will show you how we can clean that up at the end of the guide, of course. After that, you can make a shortcut route with this lever. And then that way you can get out back to Skyrim and use the fast travel to get to Viarmo. Now, after you return to Viarmo, you'll go through some dialogue options. And then you'll have to um, help Viarmo reconstruct the Olaf verse. It's again just more dialogue options, so you'll just go through that. And then eventually you have like a ceremony type thing. And again, more dialogue options with Viarmo. And after that you'll speak with Jorn. Now after you've spoken with Jorn, there's going to be the festival. You'll make your way there with Viarmo, and that will be our eighth quest complete. All right, so now we'll head to the ninth quest, which is in Whiterun. You're going to speak with Danica, who's in the town square by the big tree, and it should be called the Blessings of Nature. Now, you need to get the Nettle Bane uh, weapon, so follow the objective, kill the enemy, and grab the Nettle Bane. Then you'll go back to Danica and speak with her, and she's going to actually get you to use it to go get some sap from a tree. Now when you're in this dungeon, to get the sap, you actually have to equip the nettle bane to slash through those roots, otherwise you won't be able to make it to get the sap. Then you can switch back to your normal weapon and make your way back to Danica for another quest complete. Alright, so after that we can go do our 10th and final side quest. It's going to be called the Forsworn Conspiracy. Now this is started upon entering Markarth, so you might already have the quest. But anyways, we'll head inside, we'll go to the objective to speak to Eltris, and then you'll speak to the innkeeper at the next objective who will give you a key to Margaret's room. Basically this quest is grabbing a bunch of people's journals and then reading it to gather some information. After you get the key from the innkeeper and persuade him to do so, you can get inside her room. And there's actually a dresser over here in the corner. And inside that end table or dresser is going to be her journal. After you get a journal, just go into your items and make sure you read it to get the next quest objective. Now down here, we're going to get the key to Wayland's room from Garvey. And then you can head towards the back to Wayland's room. Open it up. Now to find his book, it's actually in this chest over in the corner. Or his is a note rather. Go ahead and read the note. And then eventually you'll be fist fighting Dryston. He's super dog shit, so go ahead and beat him up. After that, you're going to have to find evidence about Nippos. Now, when you get in here, these guys can be aggressive um, if you, you know, hang around too long or if they notice you steal anything. So what I do is I quick save, I grab his journal, and then I leave the room before they start beating the shit out of me. Make sure you read his journal as well, just like you did with everyone else. Now next we'll be turning in the quest, but I want you to make a backup save or a quick save. Because when you go to turn it in, they're going to try and take you to jail. So just reload your save, and there you go, 10 side quest trophy completed. Now at the start of the guide, I told you I'd get you these 50 skill books nice and easy, and I plan to stay by my word. So the first place you want to go is to the Hunting Brew Meadery, which is southeast of Whiterun. And when you go inside, if you head all the way to the back and then up on top floor, you can find this room and you can get the book called A Game at Dinner. After you grab that book, we can head to Whiterun in Arcadia's Cauldron. And we're going to get the Herbalist's Guide to Skyrim, which is just on the table in this room. After that, leave the shop and go to the Drunken Huntsman, which is back at the start of Whiterun. Now when you're inside, if you go behind the counter, now personally I hate when they put the book next to the NPCs behind the counter because if they're dummy thick it's just very hard to be um, focused. Now for the next part we can head to Jorvisker 
and that's where we did the companion's quest line. And in the main hall here, there's actually a book called Halgard's Tale. I'm not sure why I pronounced it like that. Um, but right here at the very back on the desk is a book. Now we can get a few more books in this area, so if you head downstairs and go in the living quarters, we're going to get the marksmanship lesson, which is in Ayala's room. And if you head all the way down, and then in this big opening, make a left, and then left into the room, you're going to find her book in this case. Now you may have to lockpick the case, but then you'll be able to grab the book. You also don't have to steal the books, you can just read them and that would be sufficient enough as well, so you don't have to take them, but you can if you want. And then head to this back room and get another book, and that'll be three books just in this building. Now after that, head back outside of this building and make your way to the left side if you're looking at the building and go up to where the forge is, and there's actually a book next to the forge. After that, we're going to head to the Hall of the Dead, which is still in Whiterun. Now, once you're in the Whiterun catacombs, if you go left, you're going to find an iron door. Open it up, there'll be a skeleton you can just smash, and then there's going to be another book. Next, we're going to Carlotta's house in Whiterun as well, and she's got a book hidden in there for us. If you head upstairs, then through the doorway, on the side of her bed is actually a book laying on its spine. Next book is going to be in Dragon's Reach. You can see the Jarl sitting there. And then if you head down into the cellar area, you can find the Jarl's quarters. Now inside the quarters itself, if you make your way all the way up to this big staircase, you can then go straight through the doorway and then make a right and it's going to be on the desk. We're already on our 11th book and this one's also in White Run. It's in the temple. And inside the temple, there's going to be an area that has a bookshelf and it's towards the back of the room over here. And you can see it hidden on the corner there called Withershins and that'll be our 11th book. Now after that we'll head to the General Goods Store in Whiterun, which is near the Arcadius Cauldron, and he's got the book on the shelf just sitting right here. After that we can go to the House of Clan Battleborn, and this is again still in Whiterun. I have the locations in the top right if you do get lost, and it's just on this shelf here with the apple on top. Now we're going to be moving to a different city. This is in Solitude, and this place is called Fletcher. And the book is actually just immediately to our left when you go inside the building. Next, right across from Fletcher is the blacksmith. When you go inside the blacksmith, there's going to be a door that you can go through. Head up the stairs. And inside this bedroom, it's going to be on this shelf that's very high up on the wall. Okay, next we're going to the Bard's College, which again is in Solitude. Now immediately in the Bard's College, just go up the stairs and then make a right. And you're going to see a lot of books right here. But if we go in first person view, you can see the book we're looking for is on the top shelf called The Buying Game. And then next we're going still in Solitude and we're going to the Castle Dower. Once you make your way inside, go right immediately and then there's going to be a left and on this table is going to be our book. You can head back out the way that you came in and then you're going to see the Emperor's Tower which is nearby of where we entered in initially. So head into the Emperor's Tower location. You'll see a throne and then a staircase to your right. If you make your way up towards the top and then in the very back area of the room you'll find a table with a book on top. Next, we're going to the city of Dawnstar. Now, you're going to go to the mortar and pestle shop. And again, it's just behind her. Make sure she doesn't clap on you with those dummy thick cheeks. 
Next up, we've got the white hull. You can make your way inside. Once inside, go left and up the stairs, and you will see a table. And that is going to be where our 20th book is. Next, we're going to the Dawnstar Barracks. Make your way inside, and you have to go down into this doorway as well, where the jail is. And you can see we need to get inside the jail cell. There's a key actually sitting here on the table that you can just take. And then you can use that to open the gate. He ain't going to do shit. And to the right is going to be the book wedged behind the pillar. Next, we're going to be going to the city of Winterhold, and we're going to Kraldar's house. This place is nice and small, so at least it's very easy to get through. If you need to, you can pick lock your way in. Now, once you're inside, it's actually going to be inside this basket. It's very cleverly hidden. How'd that get in there? <laughs> All right, so after you grab that book, we'll head to Berna's Oddments. Make your way inside and up the stairs. And it's actually sitting on the desk or dresser in the very back of the room, the back left corner. Next, we're going to the Jarl's Longhouse. All right, guys, so once you go inside, it's just under the staircase through this doorway. And again, it's hidden inside a basket. And you can actually take the basket, so that way you can grab the book much easier. And then after that, we'll head to the Frozen Hearth, which is still in Winterhold. And when you're inside here, if you go all the way to this back area, and then downstairs, you're going to be in the cellar. And when you're in the cellar, the book is hidden behind these boxes. You kind of just have to get the right angle, and you can go first person if it helps, but you can see the book is hidden right there in the crack. All right, we're already halfway through this. We're going to go to Morthal at Falion's house. So we're in a new city, and it's just on the desk by his bed. After that, we can grab another one in the same house. And it's just on his bookshelf, and it's the very bottom book. So there's two easy books, and then we'll head to the guardhouse, which is also in Morthal. Make your way inside, and you'll see a bunch of guards. You can just go towards the fireplace in the very back, and it's behind the basket and the barrel. Next, we'll go to the High Moon Hall. And when you're in here, you go up the staircase to the right and then through the doorway and you can jump on the bed and it's actually the book on the top shelf. Next up, we're going to Jorgen and Lamy's house. This is our 30th book. Now the book's actually to the left and it's hidden behind the barrel. So if you jump on top of the barrel and again, you can go like first person for a better view if you need to. And then there's the book on the floor. Now we're going to go to Thoner's house. We're still in Morthal. And when you're inside his house, if you go left, you will find it on the very bottom shelf under a basket. We're then going to the more side in. Now once you get inside, there's a room to your left, and then there's a table with a basket and the book is inside the basket. We'll go to the Thaumaturgist's hut, which is still in Morthal. Make your way inside. And the book's actually on one of these bookshelves on the very top shelf next to the bear trophy. And then we'll go to Markarth, a new city, and we're going to the Understone Keep. Now, there's actually two books we can grab here. If you run all the way to the back, like you're going towards the blacksmith area, there's actually a table here with a book on it. And then we can immediately turn around to our left and then go ahead and make your way down the hall, trying not to run into shit like I am. And then there's a throne room. So you keep going past the throne room and there's going to be this door. Now the door may be locked, you can just lock pick it, 
and then you can make your way up this little stairs and next to the bed is going to be a book. After that we're still in Markarth and we're going to the treasury house. Now inside the treasury house you'll just make your way to the left. You'll find this um, urn or pot kind of thing on the side and there'll be a book on the ledge right next to it. After we grab that one, we'll head to the Temple of Dibella. And we're going to go all the way inside the Inner Sanctum. Make your way all the way down the steps. And eventually you'll see these bookshelves here. And it's going to be on the left bookshelf and towards the bottom right. So there's a fair bit of books there, and you're looking for The Sun's Dawn, which is the third book from the left, maybe fourth book from the left. Next, we're going to Nepo's house. Now, these people may attack you from the side quest earlier if you were following the guide. And when you make it into the bedroom, close to the bed on the ledge over here is going to be another book. After that, we're going into the guard tower in Markarth. Enter the guard tower, make your way all the way down the spiral staircase. And there's a few books we can get in here. We can grab the one on the desk over here by the beds. And then we can immediately turn around. Turn immediately around, and next to where Tom Hainbeek is sleeping, you will find your 40th book. After that, we're going to the Arnleaf and Sons Trading Company, still in Markarth. And behind the counter to the left on a box will be another book. Next, we're going to head to Falkreath, so a new city for some more books. And we're going to go to the Jarl's Longhouse. And what you want to do next is go under the stairs through this doorway and then open the display case. And you will find a book. Next, we're going to go to Grave Concoctions, which is still in Falkreath. Make your way inside, and on the right, if you move the baskets out of the way, you will see another book. The next area is going to be the Hall of the Dead. Once you're inside, make your way over to the right where the beds are, and it's actually under the left bed, towards the bottom of the bed. Then we'll be heading over to Lod's house. Make your way inside and towards the left downstairs. And at the very back of the room on a barrel is going to be another book. After that, we'll go to the Falkreath barracks. When you get inside, if you go to the left, there's going to be a staircase. Just head up there. And then the book is going to be on the chest to the right. And then we need to go to the jail, which is actually down below. So head back down the stairs, and then you'll find a staircase that goes down into the jail. Now, I do get my trophy here, but towards the left by these crates is going to be our 47th book. Um, I'm going to obviously still show you 50, just because I got my trophy a bit early. And we're going to Dead Man's Drink next, which is still in Falkreath. This is going to be our 48th book, and if you go behind the innkeeper... You'll then find it to the left of her, sitting on the shelf. Next, we're going to get our last two books, and they're in Riften, so it's going to be our final city for our last two books in case you need them. We're going to Mistvale Keep, and we're going to grab two books at the same time, which is always great. Now make your way to the very back, and then make a left, and then go up the stairs. Now up here is going to be the chambers. And when you're inside the chambers, if you go through the doorway directly north and then go left on the nightstand is going to be our 49th book. You then want to make your way back down the way you came and exit the chamber to go back to the keep. And this time on the bottom of the steps, you want to go right and then you're going to go to the barracks. Now once you're in the barracks, if you go up the stairs to your right and then all the way up, you'll make a left at the top floor and the book will be on this desk in the corner.
That's going to be your 50th book, guys. So that is the reader trophy done and dusted. All right, clan. So now that we smashed that out, we don't have much left of the guide to go. So you may have some trophies left over at this point, like Dragon Hunter, Thum Master, or even Delver. Now, basically, in order to get these, I'm going to put a map up on the screen here. Now, I've color-coded it, so we've got blue for dragons, yellow for stones, and purple for the camps. Um, I wasn't too sure how to do this part, but I think this is the best way. You can just pause the video and pick up any that you might need. The dragon layers is for dragon souls as well as shouts, so you will get shouts there as well, and you need 20 shouts and 20 dragon souls. The camps count as a dungeon, so you can clear those, and they're super easy because all you have to do is kill giants. So by the end of the game, I needed like three dragons and five shouts, for example. Um, and I was able to just go through, kill all the dragons with a one shot. And yeah, that was basically it. There's a shout next to the dragon, and then also you get the dragon soul. And again, clearing those giant camps do count as a dungeon clear. So again, quickly go through that map. I do hope that was the best way to go about it. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Now, don't forget you can check your stats in the pause menu to see how many shouts and dragons you need. Now that that's taken care of, we only need one more trophy to get the platinum for Skyrim. So why don't we go do that now, guys? Alright, so the final trophy we need is going to start in Riften at the Temple of Mara. I figured what better way to end a long journey than to settle down, get married, and just relax, you know? Just relax with the love of your life. So when you get to the Temple of Mara, you want to speak to Marimal and go ahead and ask him about the temple. And eventually he's going to tell you that you can buy a necklace from him for 200 gold. Now this is the necklace you need in order to get married. After you buy the necklace, go ahead and equip it. And then now you obviously need to choose your bride. There is a wiki for you know, multiple brides if you want to choose a different one than what I chose. Now, I'm going to choose Ayala the Huntress, and you're like, oh, you must you must really like her, but honestly, no, like, she's in Dragon's Reach, and you can fast travel there, so, and I'm all about convenience and speed, you know what I'm saying? So, we're going to fast travel to Dragon's Reach, we're going to run down the steps, and we're going to Jorvasker building, where the Huntress is which is from the companion quest line that we did earlier in the guide. And I'm fucking running into a bush. But go ahead and make your way into the building if you're going to marry the same person, which is kind of weird, but you know what? I'm into polygamy. Fuck it. Look for her. She's sitting here at the table. She doesn't know that I can fix her. And all you have to do is say, are you interested in me? Because she's clearly flirting with you. And then you need to just rent out a room. So I went back to Riften and went to the inn. And then you rest in your bed. Go ahead and rest for like 15 hours and see if it continues. Because you can actually miss your wedding. Which would be terrible. And here we are, the fateful day, guys. Where I get to take her hand. And we get to settle down. We're at the end of our adventure. You made it through a two-hour guide with me again, listening to my god-awful voice and my terrible jokes. Now, if you did make it all the way through this guide, make sure you hit like if you haven't. If you're not a member of the clan, you can subscribe. Make sure you check out my ExpressVPN link if you are interested in that. It's definitely worth your time. Other than that, guys, if you're one of my real ones who made it all the way to the end of the guide, why don't you leave a comment below that says, now that being said, I do appreciate you guys' time and your support. I apologize for how long this took. It's a lot of commentary. I still juggle this with my full-time job at the moment, so it does take a lot of work. But thank you guys for being patient with me. I've got a lot more content on the way. We're going to push the channel real hard. There it is, guys, the Mary Trophy. We got the Platinum Trophy. And now we can just settle down and relax. What the fuck was that? What the fuck? Oh shit, we need to go outside now.
And as always, huge thank you to my YouTube premium supporters, Richard Watts and Samurai Zwei. I appreciate you guys. One love.